I'm sorry, but this is clearly a classic case of what you ordered versus what you got. Beauty. Alongside its sister, youth, humanity's obsession with it is a tale as old as time itself, and the pursuit of it will probably persist forevermore. But what is often seen as a blessing can also become a cruel curse cast upon those who possess it. And nobody knew this bitter reality more than the women who were once coveted as goddesses among us, only to be shunned by the very society that worshipped them. The thing about beauty, and I'm specifically talking about female beauty here, is that it's fleeting. Or at least that's the common belief of a civilization that conflates beauty and youth. Men, on the other hand, are an entirely different story, of course. Somehow, they've managed to evade this biological imperative that has been thrust upon women because apparently they can be beautiful and desirable well past their prime, whatever that means. Hence the saying, men age like wine and women age like milk. But ridiculous double standards aside, it's great to be beautiful, or so I've heard. It opens doors, people are more prone to liking you more and treating you better, and you get your pick of the most desirable and good-looking and successful wealthy partners to mate with. But for all our obsession and focus on beauty, I don't think there is enough attention given to how disturbing and damaging that obsession can be. And I'm not even talking about the damage caused by social media on today's young women and girls. Because this problem is not a social media problem. It's a human problem. One that predates modern technology by millennia. They say a picture is worth a thousand words, and while that may be an accurate adage at times, oftentimes it's not. When I first saw the young and beautiful Hetty in a photograph, I instantly pictured the glamorous life she must have led, brimming with fame and fortune and all the success that any of us could ever hope to attain. And as if that wasn't enough, I later found out that she was a brilliant inventor to boot. And mind you, in my defense, that is the popular synopsis of Hedy Lamarr's life. A beautiful bombshell Hollywood actress who was also a brilliant inventor. Full stop. And it could have ended there for me. But ironically, seeing as she was mostly known for her beauty, what drew me in was her brilliance. And so I decided, to delve deeper into her life, discover more about this amazing creature. And I went in expecting endless stories of her success and her recognition and accolades, all that good stuff. But I was wrong. In fact, I was so off the mark, it astounded me. I went in thinking I would be making an uplifting and positive story about a woman who changed the world. But it turns out, upon closer inspection, Hedy Lamarr's life was a tragic one, for many reasons that are beyond the scope of this video. But chief amongst them is the fact that she was a Jewish Austrian living at the time of World War II. And this was a huge factor that led to one of her most brilliant inventions. So rather than the successful and confident, highly accomplished woman I expected to make a video about, I instead came by a painfully insecure woman who was eternally trapped by the very beauty that she was blessed with. You see, people in her day, 
especially men in power like in Hollywood or the military, couldn't see past her pretty face. They couldn't accept that she could be both so stunningly beautiful, but equally as brilliant, if not more. And this sad reality manifested in every aspect of her life, from her six failed marriages, yes, six, she had a bit of a problem there looking for love, to her relatively short-lived Hollywood career. And this is because, according to her, the men that she married were only interested in having a trophy wife. And the roles that she was given in Hollywood were also predominantly focused on her appearance rather than her talent. In fact, early on in her career, she was explicitly told not to worry about being a good actress. All she had to do was stand there and look pretty. There was also the fact that she effectively started her career at the age of 18, leading a very controversial movie called Ecstasy, a European film, where amongst other things, nudity and sex were depicted on screen, which was very scandalous at the time. And unfortunately that role would mar the rest of her reputation in Hollywood, especially seeing as the United States was a lot more conservative at the time. And so, with that dark cloud looming over her head, she had little choice but to keep accepting the limited and often objectifying roles that were being offered to her. And while that did bring her success and made her a household name for a time, it just wasn't enough for a woman who saw herself as far more than just a pretty face. By the time Hetty was a bona fide Hollywood star in the early 1940s, World War II was well and truly underway, spreading like a blight across Europe, including Hetty's homeland of Austria. And although her father had sadly already perished before the war from the stress of it, and her mother had safely fled to London at the time, Hetty was still tortured by what was happening back in her home, and she wanted so desperately to do something about it. She'd already involved herself with all the expected Hollywood contributions to the war efforts at the time, including working at the Hollywood Canteen, where all the Hollywood stars waited on servicemen who were on their way to the war entirely for free. But even there, Hetty's beauty worked against her when she was made to kiss the soldiers on their way out, which she did say made her feel quite uncomfortable, and understandably so. But helping to sell war bonds and waiting on servicemen was just not enough for the ambitious Hetty. And so she set out to do what she'd always had a knack for, but had always been overshadowed by her beauty, inventing. Together with good friend and famed composer, George Antile, she came up with the concept of frequency hopping to prevent the US Navy's torpedo systems from being tracked or jammed by the enemy. This was accomplished by modeling the system after a piano's mechanism. She said, what if we change those frequencies constantly in sync with each other? Frequency hopping. You couldn't jam it because you'd only jam a split second of it in a single frequency. A patent for this invention was granted with Hetty's name clearly listed as one of the inventors. With this accomplishment, Hetty was on top of the world. Finally, she could prove that she was more than just a pretty face, but more importantly, she felt that she'd created something that would actually have a tangible impact on the war. But, there's always a but, isn't there? Unfortunately, when this invention was pitched to the US Navy, the officer in charge basically laughed George Antile out of the room, seeing him as nothing more than a musician and Hetty nothing more than just a pretty actress. Now, to be fair, they were both untrained and predominantly self-taught, but they did eventually work with scientists to get this invention going. And as we now know, their invention paved the way for current modern technology, such as Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, and modern military technology. There is a theory that was put forth by one man who believed that Hetty had plagiarized this invention, but so far it hasn't been proven. 
And one could argue that this was just another form of sexism manifesting in the sense that a woman couldn't possibly invent such a brilliant thing, let alone a beautiful woman. So after that very disheartening rejection, Hetty was effectively dismissed and told to go back to the Hollywood canteen and back to the Hollywood screen to do what she does best, be sexy. And be sexy she did. She had three children and was a single mother at the time, so she really didn't have much choice. But time doesn't stop, not even for the most beautiful goddesses among us. And for women in particular, time in Hollywood moved at double the pace. It's interesting, and by interesting I mean infuriating, but they say that women age in dog years in Hollywood, in the sense that by the time you're 25, you're pretty much washed up. But Hollywood mirrors the real world, in the sense that the same rules don't seem to apply to men. You've got the George Clooney's, the Clint Eastwood's, the Brad Pitt's, the Ryan Gosling's, the Sean Connery's. Even back in Hedy Lamarr's time, almost all of her male co-stars were significantly older than she was. As I said at the beginning of this video, it's a tale as old as time itself. So, in a pathetically predictable move by Hollywood, and one that is still very much prevalent today, by the age of 35, and after the immense success of her latest role in Samson and Delilah, Hollywood started to shun Hetty. But, being the fighter that she was, she tried to pave her own way by producing and starring in her own films. But these projects either flopped or went relatively ignored, with one mammoth project called Loves of Three Queens failing to secure any distribution after Hetty had invested millions into making it. It was clear that Hollywood was intent on pigeonholing her in the role of the young and beautiful siren. And they showed no quarter when life took its natural course and Hetty inevitably started to age. And by age, I mean literally she hit 35 plus. So it's laughable. But look around you, <laughs> not much has changed. By her 40s, she started dabbling in plastic surgery, and by her 50s, unable to face the reality of aging, and with her face botched by the countless surgeries that she'd subjected herself to, Hetty withdrew from society entirely, effectively becoming a recluse in her own home, hiding away even from her own family. Even though she says it was a curse, that's what people liked and loved about her. And she, for some reason, I think she thought even her family, her grandchildren, her children, want that. She went as far as refusing to accept an award in 1990 when she was finally recognized for her frequency hopping invention almost 50 years later. Instead, she sent her son to accept it on her behalf where he played a recording of her acceptance speech and held up a magazine with an image of her younger self on the front cover. I'm happy that this invention has been so successful. I appreciate your acknowledgement of you honoring me and that it was not done in vain. Thank you. Her only interaction with the world was through a phone. And that was the case until her dying day on the 19th of January, 2000. What's really tragic to me is not just the fact that Hetty was defined by her beauty and little else, but the fact that even she eventually bought into it. Even though she, of all people, knew exactly what she was capable of. She knew that she was so much more than just her appearance. But the desperate attempts to hold on to her youth to the point of retreating entirely from the world so that they would only remember her as the young and beautiful version of herself, that just shows you the extent of the damage that was done to her self-esteem and her self-image after years of constant positive reinforcement when she was young and constantly being told either directly or subliminally that her entire worth as a human being was grounded 
in her appearance. So what I said earlier about beauty opening doors, I think this is a classic story of, while that may be true, it's also capable of closing just as many. And her story is just one of many. It's echoed throughout history, before her, after her. Most recently, a 31-year-old beauty queen ended her life because she couldn't handle the pressure of living in a society that incessantly tells younger women, your time is almost up. By the way, she had so much going for her. She was a lawyer like myself, but unlike me, she was a beauty queen and she had her own segment on national television in the US. You a savage. Thank you. Much like Hetty, the exterior portrayed a perfect existence. But rather than retreat from society like Hetty, this young woman unfortunately decided to retreat from life itself, which she talks about at length before her death in an article that I will try and find and link in the description box if you're interested, because it's really sad. This is a real problem. While this particular beauty queen did have mental issues that were pre-existing, according to her mother, which means that thankfully most of us will not resort to such drastic measures, it's still a problem that is lurking in society and that I think we're really not giving much attention to. Instead, we're exacerbating it. My parents recognized that my strengths were predominantly up here and they nurtured that, particularly my father. There was no stress on me to look a certain way and to dress a certain way and to be beautiful. Outside of my job here on YouTube, I don't even put on makeup. But that's not because I'm trying to make some kind of a stance. It's because I don't feel like it. In fact, there was a time where I didn't put on makeup on YouTube. But what I'm trying to say is, we need to do away with this one standard of beauty for women, which is impossible, seeing as we are all naturally destined to age. Beauty may not be fleeting, in my opinion. I've seen many a beautiful woman beyond a certain age, but youth is. So rather than obsessing over the impossible, why don't we choose to focus on and nurture and value something that only gets better with age, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge. That would give us all, men and women, something to look forward to. Rather than approach a certain age in your mid-twenties and start panicking about the inevitable. Because this obsession with beauty and youth clearly comes with a significant cost. Our sanity as women our well-being, even the way we treat each other. You know, older women are some of the nastiest people to me. And I vow to never behave that way to younger women if I'm ever lucky enough to age. Because it's stupid, it's ridiculous. You're angry at people for being born after you were? We need to move away from that mentality and the root of that problem. Why some older women feel that way, and even older men feel that way about younger men, is because we live in a society that is telling everyone your value is inextricably linked with your youth. Of course, for men, it's on a much lesser scale. And for those who say, well, it's only natural to obsess over youth because it's ingrained in us, it's a biological imperative, youth is synonymous with fertility, fertility is required for the propagation of our species. Well, to that I would say, firstly, what an insult that must be to all the beautiful people out there, beautiful and youthful people out there who suffer from infertility. Are you telling us that they don't have inherent value because they struggle with that problem? Of course not. It's ludicrous to even say out loud. And further to that, if we're gonna go with the it's natural argument, well, guess what? Aging is natural. And yet we do our darndest to shun it and demonize it and erase it from our existence. I just wish we all just do what we want in the sense that you wanna put on makeup, do it. You don't wanna put on makeup, don't do it. You wanna color your hair, you wanna do this, do that. Do what you want to because you want to and not because society pressures you subliminally to do it. I just hope we don't get to a point where it becomes the norm for women of a certain age to 
retire from society altogether because they're shunned and they just don't want to be seen. Because they had the audacity or the good fortune to survive. That's it. Um, thanks for coming for another one of my TED Talks. And I hope this helps. I really do. This is something I feel quite strongly about. So yeah, see you later. <laughs>